All right, what's up, guys? Uh, Solar Renekton only here. Do another coaching commentary. This one is for Nicholas. He plays on Latin America Self, and he's in Plat One. So this game's against Nar. Uh, they both took teleport. I like teleport against Nar. Really don't have too much kill potential in lane if it's played reasonably well. Because typically, well, well, the problem with this lane for Renekton is uh, your dash and Nar's jump share about the same cooldown. So anytime you dash, Nar just jumps away, and you'll never be able to gap close close enough with your second dash. So as long as Nar immediately jumps when you dash, there's pretty much nothing you can do, and you just kind of get kited. So be interesting to see how you play this out. I'm going to speed it up a little bit, get to the lane phase. Oh, you know what? You guys told me I should do this last time. Uh, what side are we? We're blue. All right. I'm going to change the fog of war. That way we can talk about like vision and stuff a little bit more. All right, double time. <laughs> um, actually, don't know what keystones everybody has. It's kind of annoying, huh? Oh, we we can find out relatively quickly if he gets a buff for fervor, or if he gets the uh, or he does thunderlords. So, pretty standard stuff. Getting this bush at level one. It's like my favorite spot to be against any range champion. This is like your best spot because they can't really harass you. And if they drop your ward, then you just play up on this bush. And you should always be able to just walk up and queue like the first creeps. So looking good. In any range matchup, your entire goal is to get to like level three without taking too much harass. Looking quite good. Okay, so Nara's running Thunderlords. You're running fervor. Okay. You got really junk there. Nice Q. Got your potion ticking. Let's rewatch that fight a little bit. I think you overcommitted. Let me take off this. There we go. You hit with the Q here. Doesn't mean much. This Q's on cooldown for like five more seconds. I like this Q, but you should probably leave after that. Yeah. Yeah, you should leave after the after the queue. Because you gotta time his queue. So right here you know what his timer is, so we can just click on and watch. So it goes down to eight seconds. So like I said, right here is like five seconds, so it's six. Okay? So you need to like keep that timer in your head. And if you're gonna trade around that, like I kind of like this trade, but it's it's not really good against Thunderlords because it just outs trade you. But like and then right here, like you already gotta be getting away. You just gotta keep those timers in your head. Cause you could have saved yourself a lot. A lot of trade. I like this key right here. You saw him ward this one. He doesn't have another trinket. You can use this bush. You know he doesn't have vision of you. <laughs> the assist ping. So at like 230 in the game. You're still level 1, but you'll get it off this next creep. I think you missed EXP, huh? Yeah, you missed EXP from one of the melee minions. Probably when you were running over here. A little unfortunate. You'll be pretty fine once you get to... Once Nar Mega Nars. The thing with Mega Nar in the early stages for this matchup is it doesn't really do much because Nar is super slow. So as long as you can just dodge with your E, you should be good. And you took E second, which is pretty much what I do, especially in range matchups. So I like that. And the wave shoving into you, so really don't need no need to be crazy aggressive here. Just get the CS that you can. Nice. Yep, just dash away. Easy. Wave still shoving to you. You don't have to like. Try super hard to get these creeps. Look at the health advantage you're gaining right now. This is all pretty good. Since it's pushing in, you don't really have to worry about junglers. Pretty good stuff here. Oh, that's that was such a good trade. Oh man, that was great. So this is like the new trade that you really want to be doing with Fervor. That was just perfect. So we'll just show this trade. Uh, basically, so the way Fervor works now is you can only build it up on champions, right? So you need to auto attack. You want So that basically tells you that you want to stack up Fervor before you use your Q, because Q obviously benefits the most off of Fervor, right? So you want to stack up the Fervor stacks to as high as you can before you use your, Q, your uh, W. So in this play, watch. He's going to wait in, to use his W until the very last thing. So there's one stack. From the uh, or sorry, two stacks from the ability. Here, I'll just slow it down so we can just play it through. 
So there's two stacks from the ability. Boom, one auto attack. That's four stacks. It's dash, it's, uh... The dash doesn't give another stack because there's a two second cooldown between when abilities apply. apply. But this next auto attack gives the next stack. And then, boom, he's at six stacks. He hits 50 rage. That was just beautiful. There's not even much to coach on that one. That was just really nice. Okay. Hopefully this isn't one of these games where it's just you stomping. <laughs> Yep, I just like shoving right here. He's got TP, but it doesn't really matter. You can shove, and then even if he, like... The reason why you still want to shove here, it's because you have TP as well. So, like, if you had Ignite, then it's kind of, like, iffy, but you're still going to end up shoving because you're Redecting. Like, maybe a different champion might not shove in that situation. But your wave's already going to shove out because it was, like, even creeps right here. So no matter what you do, it's going to push. So you might as well speed up the process and, uh... Also, you can force out Nar's teleport, and if you didn't speed up the process and you just like back, then they came back. Nar could have just ran to lay and not have to use the teleport, and then he would have had an advantage because you would have to TP because the wave would be pushing and you would be denying yourself creeps. So definitely want to push in this scenario. I like that. It helps a lot that it's on Renekton, so it's really easy to push, nice and fast. You might be able to do something here. Yeah, because you have Lee Sing in your jungle. He's getting caught out or in the enemy jungle, sir. Yeah, not much is there. You're just gonna drop your ward, huh? And back. How much gold are we working with? Fifteen. Whoa, whoa, fifteen CS. What happened here? We're at four minutes. That seems pretty bad. Hmm. Yeah, your CS should be a little bit better. I don't know. I think you might have missed a bunch of, I maybe didn't touch on it, that giant wave that you did your all-in trade on, that you got the kill, you probably missed quite a few CS there, to the tower, while you were doing the trade. Mm. Takes a little bit of value from the trade, but it's still first blood, so it evens out, so you get like that extra bonus gold. Mm. Would have been real nice if Lee Sin helps you. I don't think uh, Jax warded over, so you guys probably could have secured that quite easily. So how much gold did you have? 15? Wait, what? Oh, yeah, 900, okay. Yeah, this is an obvious buy. Pickaxe. Potions. Alright. Pretty usual. Oh, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Alright, I was just about to say some usual stuff here. But this is never a spot where you want to TP. So, right now, after the TP changes, TP is so important. Because the cooldown got increased right you no longer get this two minute decrease when you te teleport to a tower right so that's super important that you need to save it and not use it to tp the lane like forcing your opponent to have to tp the lane is a huge thing you force nar to tp the lane right so that means his cooldowns down for for uh like right now it's down for like another four and a half minutes right so four and a half minutes that's four and a half minutes that you have the tp advantage that's four and a half minutes that you can set up a, a tp play on bot maybe turn a gank that's happening in mid that's a huge advantage you should never tp to that and then which compounds the problem here is that this wave is going to push to you which means watch we have even number of creeps on both sides right so we got three, four, five, six, seven, verse one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's not even even creeps, it's uneven creeps. This is obviously gonna push for the red side. So this is gonna be a wave that's pushing to you, so you're gonna lose less creeps. There's no you have to just run back here. Let's play it out. It gets more obvious right when the next wave comes, and right when you start your teleport. Look at this situation we're in. These extra creeps are coming to reinforce, right? These are all going to die. This is going to live. Maybe the cannon minion lives. Two extra cat, Three extra casters live. So there's going to be at least nine creeps in this wave. Possibly a cannon extra. So at least nine creeps versus six. Nine versus six is going to keep pushing. You can just run back the lane and you're going to hardly miss out here. So And you would keep the advantage of a four and a half minute advantage on your teleport. And you can make a play off of that. So pretty big mistake. Nar kind of just lets you get a nice trade. And then he jumps in. He's crazy. Okay. Um, I don't really know if I have much to say about that. That was kind of interesting. Speed it back up a little bit. 
Alright, so we teleport in. Our E is on cooldown. For some reason. So, we get a W. We're already in a really bad spot, but you can just auto Q here. So this is going to be good. It's the auto. And the Q, perfect. Just walk away, we don't have our E or anything up. This is Nara going crazy though. You haven't used your E yet. I don't see how he ever wins a strid. I think this is just the enemy Nara being very, very dumb. You make a nice play where you dodge his Q that's going to come out, but... He made a very dumb play. It looks somewhat close in the end because you get hit by the by the Q, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. That was a pretty bad play by Nar. Now you can just shove in this wave. You're getting kind of a free advantage. The first the first kill was nice, but then that's like something you never want to do, right? As the Nar in that situation, you're it's like throwing uh, good money after bad, right? Is that how the saying goes? Bad money after good. One of the ways I don't remember, but. <laughs> The premise is, you're already behind, right? Why try and make like a big play and a risky play to get back into it when you can just, you're playing a tank, you're playing Gnar. You can just farm this out, go even in lane, use your E to jump away from the Renekton, never have to really trade again. And then it's just a 1-0 and Renekton versus an 0-1 Gnar. You both have even farm. You go to the mid game and you're a team fighter. You know, that, that, that extra 3, 400... 400 in this case because of the first blood. That extra 400 gold would mean next to nothing. That'd be a ruby crystal in the mid game. Who cares about a ruby crystal extra in the mid game? So this is like a huge mistake by Nar trying to make a play. I mean, it looks somewhat close, but I don't know. If he's counting cooldowns, you used your Q and your W. You still have your E up the entire time, right? In his mind, he doesn't know that you didn't use it or you already used it before you TP'd in, right? He doesn't have that information. So he should assume that it's up. Just, just knowing that that you have another ability up, I don't know. It's just a very terrible, terrible idea to chase, but you capitalize on it, so that's good. But yeah, now Nara's in like a really bad spot, and you'll probably be able to dive him under tower and stuff. So at this point, you're gonna really want to push your advantage. You're gonna back with, let's see. Okay, you're gonna back with 600 gold, so it's gonna be pretty obvious to finish Hydra and then just grab boots and then you really wanna what level are you? 6? You can't get a blue trinket yet but you should be using your wards in their jungle and start trying to take this top tower ASAP and start pushing your advantage. You're up 2 kills you can tell your jungler too that you're up 2 kills and that you should pressure top side because if your jungler comes top in a situation like this it makes it very easy to finish dives when you're up like 2 levels all you have to do is play around Narbar and you'll be okay so, somehow Cassidy is up 39 CS to 14. What is going on in the mid lane, though? Oh my god. I don't understand that one. Interesting. I don't think there's any way Cassidy should be that far ahead. That just means Ari like, missed all of her spells, and Cassidy poked her out with, uh, with Q. So like the same situation as last time where you ran up here, you would have been walking into like the same amount of creeps in the same spot. Less creeps for you, more creeps for him, you're in a good spot in the lane, you can even let it keep pushing to like right here, and then try and make a play on him. It's not just never ease away. It's just way too late. And he misses Q. If he landed his Q, he could chunk you out real hard, he didn't even catch it. Yeah, this Nara is not playing very well. I like this. I like this a lot. You let him push you in a little bit more. After this, you do it for one more wave, and then the wave's going to be like right out here. And then you can set up a play where you can just double dash at him. Because he's, he's clearly not eating away correctly. He's not doing it fast enough. Like, the first time you dash, he needs to jump away. And then you throw a Q as Nara. That's what you do. Renekton dash, you jump away, you throw a Q. And that's how you play the matchup. And not, Renekton should never ever be able to touch you. And then you just farm evenly. You're a great tank. Renekton's a lesser tank. You have more utility in the team fights, more AoE CC. You beat him in that sense, right? So it should be very easy for Nar to even farm the lane and then just be a much better tank in the mid game. 
but this guy doesn't use his jump away, so you can punish that severely. So this next wave you should just let wipe out because he's got obviously extra creeps here. He's got what six extra, so twelve versus six is obviously going to keep pushing. So you want to wait until your wave is cleared, and the wave the next waves will like catch right outside your tower here, and then you have all this lane to catch him, all this lane to run him down right now and you got boots he's got boots but as long as you uh double dashed on him you should be okay and this guy's shown over and over again that he hasn't been able to jump away from your dashes so it should be quite easy to make a play like that that's something you should do against like rumbles and stuff like that vladimir's things that like don't have slows and escapes they get punished so hard when they overextend so if you ever find yourself in a situation with a wave like this that you can manipulate and get it all the way over here you can it, it's just so easy to capitalize on weak range opponents for Necton. that's basically what i wait for when i play against rumble or something right you bait him into pushing you with by uh, walking up and letting him cue you and then he cues the whole wave it pushes the minions and then once it's right here you just run him down you just all in him and kill him because it's he's got to run from all the way over here all the way back to his tower even if he's got flash he's like not getting away so let's see what we do you're gonna make him sit back and range farm i like it oh he did it oh i don't like that you always lose this trade yeah you're just very far ahead oh if he threw you into his tower oh man this nar could shit on you right there all you had to do is throw you the other way I mean, you're doing stuff good, but, like, he should be able to punish that. You never want to use your double dash. This is why This is why using your E on Nar counters Renekton, because when you use your double dash like that, you end up stuck in a position that you can't get away from. And if Nar's able to kite out just a little bit, he slows you, and then he can just run you down. Because he's got the movement speed increase from his W, and then he's slowing you with his Q. So you can't really get away from that, and you don't have another dash. That's why using your second dash after he jumps is bad. So, let's see. So right there, right here is when you turn around. Immediately, the second you see him jump, you turn around. If you can't stun him before he jumps, you leave. You already have your W parked, so I don't know. I think you want to like walk up, but it's not worth it to double dash. And especially right here, after like you have a second of like disengagement, I know what you're trying to do, and it's like, oh, I don't have a second dash. You'll like be dumb and just like walk into me. Like I do that sometimes, but you're not close enough. That's like 600 range. Your dash is only doing 400. So, yeah. If you can't dash and get the stun immediately, it's just not worth it. Because once he gains his distance, he's going to Q you, and then what do you do? You trade with the Q, that's fine. You're, you're super fed at this point, so the trades look kind of ridiculous, because you get way more damage off than you should. But, at the end of the day, and he's got the full Gnar bar, so this is like the worst situation. Right here, you're dead if Gnar just throws you under a tower. All you have to do is ult backwards. You get tossed to right here, tower hits you once, you're dead. So you got very lucky that he decided to throw you this way. He could have even thrown you this way and hit you into the wall and got the double damage and killed you. So you got very lucky. I would definitely say that's a misplay by you and you just didn't get punished because you're very far ahead and the Nar made another mistake. So definitely you got to be careful with your second dash like that. That's why like against these champions, Nar, Lissandra, Jace... All these champions can punish you, Vayne, Quinn, Teemo. If you can't dash W them immediately, they punish you because they snare you, they kite you, and as you try and run away, they return so much damage, so much more damage than you ever output. And it makes it so difficult. Like Jace, he switches the hammer stance and knocks you away. Lissandra, she W's the snares the whole ground and walks away and cues you in the face and slows you. You know, like all these champs have a way of getting away from you. Vayne tumbles away. You dash again, condemns you. And then what are you doing? You're stuck 500 range away from her and you can't do anything. Like in this situation. You luckily, the Nar didn't like orb walk correctly and he could have been even farther away from you. Like if that's me playing Nar, you're never touching me. I'm cueing you in the face and then I'm running you down as you try and run away without your E. Or I just kill you when it plays out like that because I know how to ult under tower. But yeah, you should have definitely been punished right there. And it would have been really, really bad because you're way ahead of him right now. And it would have basically brought him back in the game. You kind of lucked out though. Definitely a big misplay. So, hardcore shoved this in. You know he doesn't have TP if you're timing it. Because you forced it out about four minutes ago at his tower. Okay, what are we buying? Oh yeah, you didn't have too much gold, huh? Actually, wait, what? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You only had like 700. Mm, you know what I would buy here? I, I would, in this matchup, I think swiftness boots are so good in this matchup. It gives you slow reduction, and then it gives you extra movement speed to help you catch and help you like finish these chases. And it's pretty l unlikely that your opponent in this scenario is going to have boot upgrade, right? It's like think of what items he's going to rush. Generally, it's like maw. Or sorry, it's not maw. It's um, uh, phage into into black cleaver or like an armor item, right? He's really going to get boot 2 upgrade. So you're going to have the boot 2 upgrade plus it's like a it's like a boot 2 and a half, you know, a boot 3, right? Cuz it's it's a swiftness boots. It's plus 65 movement speed. So with plus 65 movement speed, you should be able to catch him cuz you have the boot upgrade advantage plus it's a better boot in terms of speed. So that would have probably been a better buy cuz the ruby crystal isn't really going to help you do anything. It's not going to help you kill him, you know? And that's where you where you want to be right now. You don't need tanky stats to kill this guy. You just need extra movement speed. That'll also protect you from ganks a little bit cuz it'll help give you more mobility to outplay potentially. Yeah, I just think overall just swiftness boots buy right here would have been the best. But your buy is not awful. It just doesn't really do anything for us. It just kind of builds into our next items, which is okay. I think you're going to end up going for Ninja Tabby, which I think is wrong this game. If you're going to go anything this game, it's either it's Swiftness Boots to like split and play around Gnar. And, well, Swiftness Boots are just really good overall anyways because they're super cheap. But yeah, it's really good for, this, for the reason I gave before. And then also um, Merc Dreads because they have a ton of CC. Ninja Tabby isn't really that great in this, in this matchup. Like, sure, you get some armor against, like, a couple of people who do physical damage, but they have a lot of CC, and you could abuse your power in the split push scenario with swiftness boots a lot better. So those, those are probably boot, two boots I would rather have. Yep, just getting punished. Jeez. <laughs> he just walks back into you. It's so free, man. Nice. Getting autos in between everything. Really good. This is like the thing I'm talking about, how he chases you down at the end. If he gets hit here, I'm going to cry. Okay, good. That was some decent kiting toward the end there from Nar, but he shouldn't have been hit at all by you. And he should, like, that's, the kiting at the end there is how it should look the entire time. Uh oh, he... Yeah. on your minimap right now. See action happening in mid lane. You see Jax is like half HP, so you know he's still on the map. Look where he is right now. Oh, I see you're dashing in, you're not looking at your map. You're fighting. So you know Jax is like topside right now. I know it's a lot it's very difficult to look at your map when you're trying to fight. I have the same issue a lot of the times. That's actually why I a lot of the times when I know there's a ward here or something and my jungler is going to gank like this, I'll just tell him to sit in this bush. Not even tell him. I will just won't tell him that there's a ward there. And I'll just see once he moves from this bush and gets to like right about here, right where the ward would spot, I'm already starting the fight. That way the my opponent's looking at me, very unlikely that they're looking at their map. Just like in this scenario, you're fighting, you're not looking at your map. Like I said, it's very hard to do. That's why it's like a good tactic to abuse. So... I would start my fight on my enemy the second my jungler could walk through the ward. It's unlikely that he sees him. So I could even back up and my opponent would just keep trying to fight me. Maybe he thinks he can win now and he would keep going aggressive on me. Or my cooldowns are done and he wants to trade his. So he's still looking at me. All of his attention's on me. Distracted by me. And my jungler comes right in. And then all of a sudden he tries to run away. But he's way overextended because he's up here in the lane. I'm here. My jungler's coming behind him with the pincer move and he's dead. So you can really abuse the, the fact that people won't look at their map when they fight. So you kind of get abused because you should know that the jungler is in the top side. And then you could have played a lot more carefully around this. Because if you know the jungler is in top side, this like isn't a play that you make. You just never double dash over here into... Like you don't have vision anywhere. Like your mid laner doesn't have wards except on his bot side. So you know the jungler is top side. He could do this. He could do scuttle crab. It's actually more likely that he's doing scuttle crab since he was like in this area. Like, where would you go from here? You go up to scuttle crab slash gank top where you see an overextended guy, or you go into your jungle. So it's pretty likely that he's actually going to come here. But this all stems from the fight that you had, and you weren't really looking at your map. But you could have you could have seen this. I know you really want to protect your pink, but and then again. That's another issue. You double dashed 
and this puts you in like such a bad position. Even if this guy wasn't here, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure you might like lose this level, one, this all in. You don't have your ultimate up for like 12. You might actually, uh, you're so far ahead right now. You might be able to 1v1 the Nar. Like you might be able to wait until your ultimate comes back and then 1v1 him, but it would be relatively close. But this is just not a good play because you double dash again. That's like the main issue you keep running into in a matchup like this. You just can't be double dashing. I think he would have just killed you by himself. You didn't have your ultimate. I'm pretty sure Nar would have just killed you. He has his ultimate up. Yeah, dude. He would have easily killed you. 300 damage from his ultimate and then all of his other spells, he would have killed you by himself. So just very overextended with the double dash. Like, you don't really have to. It's only 75 gold. You don't have to defend it that hard. It's not that big of a deal. It's not even like your jungler's top side, so that makes it even worse of, of a play. If your jungler is doing like his blue buff right now and he's passing it off to Cassidy, then it's okay because he's like in the area. But you have like no vision in the area. You double dash into the area. You could have potentially seen the jungler there. I know it's unlikely that you would have. I I likely would not have seen the jungler either there, and I wouldn't have known. But this that makes it a risky play because you don't know where the jungler is. So that in and of itself should tell you not to make the play. But yeah, again, just don't dab double dash forward like that against these ranged matchups. Because you just put yourself in a position where you can't ever get away. So... Um, I think this is wrong to TP when Dragon's up. You put yourself in a TP disadvantage right now. I think it's even... I don't... I don't first off, I don't think Nar is taking the tower here. Let's back up a little bit and see. See how likely it is that he takes this. So, you're still dead, you're still dead, you're still dead, you're still dead, you're alive, okay. I don't think he tries to take this. 2,100 health, I don't think he tries to take this. I think you run back to lane in this spot. It's kind of unfortunate that you lose a bunch of CC, but you have to look at your map. Your team's all right around Dragon. What happens if you TP top, and then all of a sudden the enemy's collapsing on your your team at Dragon, and your opponent has got his TP up? Like you end up just getting completely screwed. They get a 5v4 around Dragon. They likely win the team fight, because it's 5v4. They likely win the team fight, and then they take Dragon, possibly even more. It's a massive swing in the game. So this is like another a second mistake with your teleport already. It's not, you should not use teleport to like teleport back to lane as much as you used to. The penalty with the, the timer uh, nerf is very big and it, may, it means you need to use your teleport around the map. This is like twice you've used it back to lane in situations that you probably shouldn't have. Alright. Interesting NAR play. He jumped into you. I would have probably done the same thing and turned around and tried to run at him. But he ends up having some good spacing. He kited that out pretty well. Yeah. You just gotta wait now. It's gotta be nice and passive. This is such a bad situation. You used your TP. You come back to lane. You get some of the creeps. Well, you don't even get some of the creeps because you like tried to all in him and you like missed a bunch. See, that's like half your issue. You're up three kill. You're at three and one, and you have less CS than him. That's that's an issue. You're constantly trying to like fight and harass, and you're missing all these creeps. Let's watch. How many creeps are we gonna miss here? Just going for him. We're missing one right there that you could have gotten. We're missing another one. We're still fighting over here. Still fighting over there. Miss three? No, we're getting those. Okay. Miss four. That's what I mean. This teleport was just so useless. We just got four creeps that we would have wouldn't have gotten. Like, I don't think he's taking the tower ever there. I don't think he has enough time because the creep wave is gonna wipe out and it's gonna be like up here again. Like this creep wave is gonna be like what it was. He doesn't have enough time to take it. And then you have your TP available, so you wouldn't get screwed and give the enemy the TP advantage at tower. Or at dragon rather. Okay. Now you're in like a rough spot where he's got the HP advantage and you have to kind of give him seed control of the creep wave. Oh, you should have waited for that to end. You got wrecked. Oh my. This Gnar is so bad, dude. You should be getting so punished for this. He's very... Alright. Let's see here. 
Yeah, this is just you getting kited. That's what I mean. If you when you you can't use your dash unless you can stun him. Unless you're 100% sure you're gonna get the stun. And uh, when you when you can't get the stun, you just turn around immediately. You just second dash out immediately. Like when you're against a good nar, the best you can do is dash. Q dash away because you dash Q you hit him before he jumps or as he jumps you get the Q damage and then you dash away it's like literally the best you can do against a quality NAR player but, <laughs> I don't know I think you're kind of getting baited because he played so poorly in the beginning but you're at a severe health disadvantage and that signals you to all in you have to wait for this to time out you just gotta watch the rage bar. Like, you had literally a couple seconds to go here. I know you're trying to get the timer before he gets the speed, but yeah, <laughs> mistimed it. Not really sure why he was so afraid of you. He could have killed you right there already. Oh my god. I think that was just kind of unlucky. I don't think... He got the double bounce when he bounced here. Did you see that? What? What? What was that, Riot? Hold up. Watch his hitbox on this double bounce. That was kind of goofy. Look at that! Come on! He should have killed you right there. He got screwed by the double bounce. You got very, very lucky on that. He could have killed you here when you were stunned by just autoing you once. And then he could have killed you here by not getting screwed over by the dumbass double jump mechanic. He could have also jumped over it this way just slightly more and been safe. But that's the second time he's gifted you a kill. This is like, this is like, I don't know. This is a huge issue in lower ELO. And I don't even know if it's a huge issue in lower ELO. It's a huge issue in probably every ELO because... Um, why can't I pause? Hello? Alright, whatever. <laughs> this is an issue in like every ELO because... Uh, people constantly think they can come back and keep trying to make these plays. Oh, man. Oh, wow. A lot of damage. Oh, you Mr. E! Gonna get him with the oh, Lee got him. Okay. Could have killed him with E. I miss my second E too sometimes. Yeah, I just leave now. <laughs> These are just all cause you're so fed, man. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to give good coaching on games where you're super fed because it's like, oh well <laughs> Typically you would die here, but you're up in an entire two items. <laughs> like you're up two thousand gold. So I don't know man, it's it's kinda hard. You're literally up a thousand gold right now, so he just can't fight you at all. Good combo, so auto attack in between everything. It's another situation where you can do what we talked about before, where you just let it push into you. I like it. You're already doing it. Yeah, look at it. You just let it push in. Oh. I think you just need to wait on your ease here, because you. You should just be waiting for him to kite you and then use your ease to follow. I'm sorry, that was your second E, never mind. Two thirty-eight heal. Oh baby. Yeah, you're just like really fat at this point. That's a that's a decent fight. Watch it one more time. Yeah, you're just up so much gold right here, my god. <laughs> you're literally up, like, a full item. Plus, you completed the component of the item that he's trying to get. So you have, like, all this extra phage movement speed. These combos are really good. I wish you could see when this gets used. I should have, like, the cooldown, you know? Okay. Good trade. You have like no vision right now. Whoa! <laughs> Beast! The flash play. So you got all this extra rage. This is really nice. Oh yeah, okay. 
My bad. I didn't see how little HPs he had. Oh yeah, that's a good play. What is that? Four, four, four. That's like twelve hundred something range, thirteen hundred range right there. Damn, that was really nice. Use the dash off the creep, flash after. Use your second dash that you got off the creep. You even even hedged your bet. I can't fucking pause, man. I don't know why. You even hedged your bets a little bit more, and you like stood in front of the creep, so you're like at the max hitbox. That was a really nice play. Yeah, but you definitely need to be taking this tower though, ASAP. You're like five kills right now. You know he doesn't have TP, you should just be finishing this. You should have a ward here. Where's your other ward? Oh, you have the blue trigger right now, you swapped over, okay. Yep. Whenever they don't have TP, you can almost always get away with two waves. You have your TP up now. You should be looking down here. What are we looking at? TP, it's going to be right on this spot in a second, huh? Collapse, collapse, collapse. TP behind. Let's see what happens. You're buying your items. TP! 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 What's going on, man? Oh my goodness, that was so late. Oh, dude, you had an opportunity. They were collapsing on that. You could have been. You're buying your items right now. You got nothing else to do. You should be looking at your mini map. Right here. Boom, boom, boom. Right off this creep. This guy's dead. This guy's dead. There's nothing they're doing. They're so dead. 100%. You're running, to the, you're running top. What are you doing? You got a TP in on that. You come right behind them. Sure, you're TPing into a couple of people, but at this point, it's like you're TPing after it all happened. It's like no sense. So you're going to lose your tower? I don't know. Yeah, your TPs this game have been quite poor. Twice you have used it to go to the lane when you probably didn't have to. One, The first time, the lane was pushing to you. You definitely didn't have to. And your team was around Dragon. The second time uh, was the same scenario. Your team was around Dragon. Well, the first time, you, you had a TP advantage and you gave it away just to come back to lane. And uh, when the wave was shoving to you. And then the second time you, was the dragon. And then this third time, you are very late with it. I like that you're going mid. Mid opens up the map. Definitely try and take this. Let me W the tower. Nice. Yep, trading top tower for mid is definitely worth it. Oh, we're going ham. I was just about to speed it up a little bit. Yep, you see the jungler bot side. You can get aggressive on anybody who comes here. You know where everybody is on the map? Oh yeah, she comes in with like half HP. Yeah, okay. You're missing your W damage. I mean your uh, E damage there. You probably could have waited like two seconds before the whole play. And you would have had your W up for it. Oh, whatever, it's fine. Should be like finished by this guy. Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> this is Ari. I don't know why you are walking up. I cast it in. Does a lot of damage. Looking to make a play on this guy. Oh, that's gonna be nice. I'm gonna counter strike it. Yeah, you didn't have to double E like that. Oh, nice combo. You shouldn't have w double E like that. He was moving forward, so all you had to do is just dash and hit the S key. But that's right. You still get the kill in the end. Probably could have uh, saved your buddy though. You got your stun up, right? Oh, in two seconds. Yeah, you could have just walked, and then you'd be like right here with your second dash, and you could be on him right now, auto Q with Hydra, and he's dead. Auto Hydra Q, and he's dead. Oh, you had your W activated already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have saved your buddy by just stopping. You know he's going for him, so you just stop. Sometimes when you spam your E key, it happens like that, though. So maybe you didn't do it on purpose, and you just accidentally spam the E key, and it double dashed like that. That's what happens on lower ping sometimes. I don't know what ping you're playing on, but when I was on Latin America North, sometimes when I double dash like that, that would, that would happen. So we're just trying to make a catch. Really need to get that top tower down. You're like 6 1. Yep.
Jax is pretty strong. Especially when he's building up all of his attack speed. Definitely gonna want to be careful. You do have a nice big wave, but you don't really know where they're. Oh, you do know where the top is. He's in bottom, so you're good. Yeah, you know where everybody is. Mid's in bot too. Dude, and you have jungle pressure here, so free tower. If Jash has a fight, it should be an easy dive. I don't know if this thing's correct. It's definitely not. Yeah, you're just so fed that it doesn't matter, but you're misusing your W. Or, you sorry, your E. Like twice. Um, here, we'll go slow. So how you want to use your E against Jax is you want to wait for him to counter strike, and then you want to E for distance, and you want to force him to have to leap on you. Because then at the second he starts his leap, you can dash away. So, right here. Yeah, see? Your leap doesn't... Your first dash doesn't gain you any distance, and you're still going to get stunned. So then you get stunned when he leaps you. Yeah, but you're just super fed, so it's... I don't know, man. A lot of these plays you could get punished by not being as fed. But then again, you're probably making a lot of these plays because you are fed. So I like this, just killing the tower. He's got all of his all of his attack speed all ramped up. Yeah, you were trying to bait out his E. I like that. Here it is. Somehow your auto still does damage. Rito. But yeah, that first dash. That first dash. I can't fucking pause this shit, dude. The first dash should have been this way. And then you gain distance, you force him to leap you, and then you dash again this way. And then the leap does, he doesn't stun you, you just walk back in and stun him and kill him. But it all works out, because he can't kill you during a stun, so it doesn't matter. You just keep pushing this in. You got the buff Lee's up here. You know Nara's still in bot lane. <laughs> you got life steal, whatever. You're in power queue. Buff the creeps up. Nice. Alright. Well, there you go. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Took a while to get these extra towers. Oh, I missed that extra gold. Feels bad, man. Large spooky ghost. Alright. One shot of Black Cleaver. <laughs> get life still come on. You're just so fed at this point. Your CS is very bad, though. You could probably have, like, 40 more. Easily. <laughs> Pick up a few down here, other than the can of minion. I mean, there's really not much to do right now on the map. What you probably should be doing is like asking your team to let you split bot, and then Cassidy should split top, and then the other three should just literally sit in mid lane. That's how you guys should just play. But I mean, it's solo queue and plat one, so <laughs> one three one splitting probably isn't going to be the best thing. But, yeah, you can just keep going to the stop lane if you want. I mean, you're, you're so strong right now that no one can fight you. So, the best situation for you to, would, to be would be in bot lane. Because there's two potential towers that you could easily take. In the outer tower and then the uh, tier 2. And then you could have your entire team in mid lane. If you'd like. You can like you can 4-1 in this spot or you could 1-3-1. Because Cassidy is like really strong too and no one can 1v1 her either. So, she could go, or Cassidy could go in top lane. You can go in bot lane. And it would be a really good sit spot. Or she could just go mid. You can have Cassid in mid lane too. Or she, he, whatever. Who cares. Cassid in, in mid lane as well. And then, yeah, your team can't lose the four, the 4v4. And then you can stomp Nar in the 1v1, obviously. So you get way more pressure in bot lane here. Because, like, what are you pressuring here? You're pressuring the inhib tower, you know? I guess it's, like, okay because Drags comes up. But, I don't know. You'd be bot right now and you could have uh, been at Dragon. You didn't have TP, so you could have definitely been a dragon. Yeah, your team just like catches the blitzcrank. You should just carry this fight super easy. Yep, wait for the counter strike to end, get your W. Nice. Cassidy's gonna go off. Oh, should have forced pills earlier. You guys are gonna pick up some towers here. Oh, gotta be careful though. Woo! Ham. Nice second dash. Your flash? No, we already used it. Oh, the dodge? Actually, kill this guy. I'm gonna cry. Okay. 
I should be able to kill you with speed. Why would he throw his... <sighs> the Gnar is just so bad, man. <laughs> Why would he throw his Q when he's about to transform? All he has to do is flash, use the movement speed, throw a fucking regular Q. The boomerang projectile is way faster. This shit would hit way easier. Oh my god, that was horrible. Yeah, you're just so fat at this point, man. These comment commentaries, are, like coaching over these games, is just like so difficult. Um, they're like even. I would get like a Sterix gauge in here instead of uh. You're gonna go for dead man's, I'm assuming, which isn't bad because obviously the move speed's nice and you know they have enough physical damage. But this guy's gonna have enough magic damage. This guy's got magic damage, you know. I think, and then obviously you have AP here. I think they're just pretty even in terms of the damage output. Whenever a team's like even with damage output, I generally go Sterix because health, health in the big shield is just going to perform so well against against that uh, an even composition because you're benefiting against both. Like obviously right now it's good because you bought health components, so of course that's going to benefit against both. But once you finish the item, it's going to be slightly weaker than if you would have built uh, Sterix. And then if you build Sterix like that, it allows you to swap over Titanic if you need to get even tankier. And then you're just like in a really good spot. You're super out of position though. And you have TP up, so. Well, not really. It's more like your team is randomly walking into a fight. Casting and getting caught out by Blitz. Yeah, you just don't want to defend this at all. Without Ezreal here. Pretty scary. Luckily Blitz wasted his hook, so. You guys are not under threat for like another 15 sec. You have TP. Go back for just a chain vest. The threat of getting grabbed under tower too. That's pretty scary, dude. Yeah, you just lost all your HP. Damn, dude, your TPs have been rough. That's probably the biggest thing you can improve on. I would have TP back to like the second one. TPing under the first one, you just open yourself up to being a target. If this Blitzcrank has like a brain, I'm hooking you all day here. I'm hooking you into my team. You're fucking instant dead because I'm knocking you up. Ari charms you. We have four people hitting you. You're just dead because you don't have Sterex Gauge either. So it's not going to pop off. But they chunk you out severely of the poor teleport I mean it, was, it wasn't even just the teleport like teleport was bad and blitz could have made a play off of it and he didn't but you dashed forward and that's what they punished so like yeah it wasn't really any sense of dashing forward I don't understand you're trying to clear a creep wave but you just don't have the numbers to do so because now your team is just in a bad spot because like you have no HP so how are you gonna win this 5v5 when you have like such a severe health disadvantage like look at this shit you have three people at a quarter health against this like how are you gonna win that fight I mean, yeah, you have eight kills, so that's probably how you're going to win, but... <laughs> Let's get rid of that. So, Spooky Ghost. Okay, so I guess you just defended tower with your TP. I don't know. It's not the worst thing. I don't think you're losing tower there, even without your TP, because the wave was already killed, so... Now is ARAM mode engaged? Speed this up a bit. Now we got that 5v5 in the mid lane. Israel getting caught a little bit. Ari way over committing, having no charges left and just getting killed. Oh, eBay. I can't believe there's still a tier, tier uh, or an out of tower in bot lane at 25 minutes. You should have been down there splitting. Cause like right now, what are you doing? You're just like clearing waves and shit. Like you clear waves and then they clear wave. You clear wave, they clear wave. You could have been bot like splitting, forcing someone to one v one you, and while your team just does that clear wave versus clear wave. Cause like you. Look at what you have. You have a melee mid laner. Your only range is, is uh, Ezreal, and he has no HP. So how are you ever going to hit this tower? I, mean, I guess you can just dive and... Oops. I guess you can just dive and kill everybody, maybe. Let's find out. 
It's hard to it's hard to coach games like this because you're just so fed like half the strategy just gets taken out, you know. Like, it's not required. Yeah, this is what I mean. Like that's just a bad play. It only somewhat worked because you're super fed. All right, I guess it's gonna work out in the end. I oh, don't know, man. <laughs> you're just very very fed right now. So plays that should be getting punished aren't getting out by the skin of your teeth. Ari doesn't have ultimate, so you should be fine. Ooh. Shouldn't have ran that way. She could have actually killed you if she kept walking. Should have definitely went should have definitely went this way. If she's coming this way, right? And you walk this like this, she cuts you here. Right here she can hit something on you. Right here to here. Easily. So you definitely want to go this way. Because then as she keeps chasing you, you don't lose as much distance going around this corner as you do going around this. So you still gain distance away from her, which is what your main goal is in that in that case. So let's just speed this up a little bit. Oops. What do we buy? Finished our dead man's. Getting some magic resist. Nice. Yeah, that's another way of doing it. Should be a little bit scary. He started the fight against a Jax who was hitting creeps. So he has all of his shit built up. Yeah. That's pretty much you never want to do that. You could have just waited for him to uh, end the creep wave, but you're gonna kill him here anyways. Oh, I didn't Q. Oh, my, never mind, my thing's bugged. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're just super fed, but... <laughs> again, when he's auto-attacking the creeps, he has his passive all built up, so he has a crazy amount of attack speed, plus he has he has a uh, Rage Blade, so he has all that extra stats. So you're basically fighting up at his strongest possible moment, so you're, like, never gonna win that. Luckily, you have, like, 10 kills, so... <laughs> You just need to go to the bot lane, dude. You really need to go to bot lane. You're wasting so much time. Like, you're getting farm and stuff, but how are you going to end the game without splitting bot? How much gold do we have? Jeez, you're 10 and 1. Holy. Going mid again. You should tell Ezreal to go mid, and you should go bot. He's going to 1v5. Holy. That doesn't look good. Alright. Yeah, you just really need to be getting into that bot lane. Uh, I get that you're ahead, but like the easiest way to win is force force the number advantage. Like if you go bot lane, no one can 1v1 you. They have to send multiple people. When they send two people, what happens? It's a four it becomes a four v three in the mid lane and your team can easily win that. Plus you're so fed at this point that you can win the two V you can win the one V two anyways. So you just need to be splitting, man. You, yeah, you're like pissing away your advantage because you're not splitting. And this Jax is abusing the shit out of that. Getting a bunch of free towers. And again, you're going top! Just because you picked the lane at the start of the game doesn't mean you have to go there. Ezreal was already there. Oh man, you gotta go bot, dude. That second tower is just waiting for you. You got TP right now. Oh no, never mind. It's not up. This stupid thing over here keeps baiting me, man. I'm looking down here at your stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. It is up. I don't know. Spectator mode. When I fast forward and stuff, it messes with things. You're taking a lot of damage here. Baron's still at 6k. Yikes. You're trying way too hard to force stuff. Oh my god, you're running into everybody. Oh man. Yeah, man, you just need to split. Can't, sometimes you can't carry a team. You got the perfect team that won't die. Like, think about this, right? The, look, look at your team's mobility. You have Ezreal with a, a jump that's up like every whatever seconds, you know? You got this guy, Cassian, with a jump. You got another guy with a jump. I mean, Leona doesn't have a jump, but she's ridiculously tanky with like 80 extra magic resist and armor. So your team can all get away. Like, your team is not going to die if you just leave them. So you need to be in a sp position where you're bot lane and splitting 4v1. Because your team can't win a 5v5 unless you like super hardcore carry it and you keep picking really bad engages. If you're going to try a 5v5 fight, you need to wait for Leona to do the engages. You can't be the one trying to engage because you keep finding yourself in like the mix of 10 people before your team comes. So, and At this point in the game, it's really bad to have stupid deaths like that. 
Because the enemy team get, can do so much when you're dead for a minute, you know? Yeah, your team's just fighting for no reason. It's unfortunate. You're heading top again. <laughs> just because you call that, just because you're a top laner doesn't mean you gotta keep going, man. This is gonna be real hard. But he's super low. Maybe you make a play here. Oh, this guy's gonna gnar out. Aaron's at 4k, yeah. Pretty hard to get over there. Lee Sin's coming in. Oh. Alright, they got it. You killed a cleanup kill on Ari. Oh, you guys are gonna win this, huh? They're gonna have no they have no damage left. Yeah, they have no damage left in the area. Because MF can't like jump a wall, so she has to run around. This guy's gonna die by then. And then it's 3v1 versus MF, she can't fight. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So you don't get Baron, but you kill everybody except one. So all you have to do is deal with one Baron buff. You flash up? Yeah, you flash. So you're probably looking to kill. Yep, dead. Oh, you're too slow on your auto queue. It's because they're uh, cleansed. You get auto queued slightly faster. Or you could have just queued, rather. I think a queue just finishes it. Hold up. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You're just gonna heal and cleanse. You can't really do much about that. Yay! Finally, you guys are just so ahead that the minions are going to take out shit for you. <laughs> Bring a dragon, sweet. God, three drags. Yeah, I'm just going to run away here, huh? Why would you try and go in? Okay. Well, let's put you guys in a great spot. Baron, all the objectives are off, so you guys can just like group top and probably dive, or group bot and probably dive. about that. Zon needs to buy time for you. Oh, and a nice creep to dash through. <laughs> we couldn't have got any better. Oh, missing auto. Nice CC chain. Another CC chain. Nice. Alright, now you got two people down. <laughs> Man, your teleports are very goofy. You guys got enough CC, you might make it work in the end. Oh! No HP MF. They're dead for so long. You have 60 seconds on NAR. But you have no side wave control right now, so neither side wave is pushing. So you guys are just going to run straight down the middle and try and bullet. Bully your way through three people. Oh god, you're gonna kill everybody off this, huh? <laughs> no. Dash in and go. Uh, you get a dash in and fall and kill the MF. I oh, don't know. I would have just accepted my death already and have just gone in on the MF. Probably taking her and the uh, Ari out, but it ends up working out. You guys get both the Ari and the MF, anyways. Oh no, you got out by the skin of your teeth. I probably would have traded my life and gone back in. Try to kill the MF. You got a lot of life stealing shit too. Okay, they should be dead. Because he missed the stun. Damn, this is a long game. Commentary is almost an hour. Whew. Take forever to upload. We have our items right now. Yeah, everybody's almost like full build. What's your last item, randomins? Yeah, that's fine. Attack speed slow, AoE slow. Oh, that was nice. You really already used your stun. Dude, 
Cassidy's damage late game is nuts. Probably guys gonna end against this, can you? Oh! The CC chain. Should be able to end now, huh? I think you guys can kill Jax. You got lifesteal off these creeps. Oh, look at it, went. You can just sit under a tower and wave clear though, and it's kinda hard for you guys to dive. Like who's gonna do the dive? Leona? Yep. Alright, let's do it. If you wait for that and stun after, it'd be nice. Oh no, Ezreal's not helping you. Oh, that was stupid. Ezreal needed to be on on uh Jax the whole time. At least he ended up killing the MF. He's trying to sneak a tower while he's while he's sleeping. Dash! As he jumps, dash! Nope. That's why he died. That's what I mean. Like, as he jumps, you do that second dash, you know? God, this game, though. It's a long one. But you guys are just so far ahead right now. Like, I mean, you're not necessarily ahead that much in gold and shit, but your just team fights are so different. Because <laughs> their Nar is, like, not doing anything effective in these team fights. He's not, like, ulting five people in the walls and shit. And your cats and just does so much damage, and you do so much damage, so you're just cleaning everything up. Chunking everybody out. Because you, you have you have two highly mobile assassins, basically. Like, your build, essentially, you have so much damage right now. You're just going to, at least against MF, like, you're just going to dash in the back and assassinate her. Cassidy, same thing. She has Zanyas, too. Or he has Zanyas, too. So you can just jump on MF. And then MF is going to always have to be a mobile to shoot her ultimate. And if she's not shooting her ultimate, she's missing out so much damage. And it makes you guys win these team fights so easy. So, how much gold do you still have? You didn't get any items, huh? Dang, that sucks. Now you can afford it. If you want it back right now. You have 1,900 gold, right? 1,900 to upgrade. Should have backed right there. Could have finished your, uh... I mean, you're doing nothing, nothing right now. Pretty sure you could have backed him, Cam. You have TP, huh? Yeah. There you go. A little bit late, but you made the right decision. Oh my god, no! Oh, uh, feels bad, man. So they get Baron. You're just gonna be the bruiser and just kill all their whole front line while Ezreal kites. This should never be a fight you lose. Their back line's doing nothing while you're killing their entire front line. This is great. Look at MF doing nothing. Cause they're, cause you're, your back line's kiting back, except Ezreal randomly shifts forward and insta dies because, you know, platinum. Okay, well, you probably should have been able to end the game off of that, because Ezreal should still be alive, and it should be four against two with Ezreal, and that's easy, taking this, but maybe you guys will catch. Lee Sin's chasing. Spooky ghosts. Oh, yeah, you might catch here. Yeah, they got no mana. You're so tanky. Auto attack! No! should auto attack when you got this passive going up. It's uh, a ton of life steal and a ton of uh, spell vamp. So I don't think he would have lived, but he would have lived longer. She flashed anyway, so it's kind of hard. But these fights are just so wonky, man. <laughs> I feel like this game should have been closed out forever ago. And like all this is just kind of because it got to super late game. I don't know. That Ezreal flash in or E in was horrible and through. They like E'd in into Ari Charm and MF and they just got insta killed. If he just stayed alive with the rest of you, it would have been way better. You guys probably could have taken another inhib off of that. It's like weird fights and at this point your death timer is like 60 seconds. Whew. You should have, honestly, you should have been able to end the game already. This is, this is, a lot of this is your fault because you didn't split bottom and you kept like grouping and starting team fights without your team. I know it's fun to get super fed, but you could have went bot, taken out those towers. Like, the towers didn't die till like, the 30-something minute mark. That's fucking crazy. You need to be in there and splitting. Oh, my God. Free win. Okay. Well. <laughs> 43 minutes later, MF randomly walks into the middle of the lane, and you get free kills, and you win the game. Well. Interesting. You're going to get wrecked, though. As long as you don't get charmed, you should be okay. Oh, Cassidy got charmed. He ate it for you. 
Nice. Walking away it saved your life. Barely. Okay. Oh god, you might die. Hit them creeps, dog. There you go. You have so much life still right now. You have the red pot too. You guys should be able to end. You can kill creeps. Get your life still. Yeah, 100 something a hit. Yeah, okay. Unfortunately, Ezreal killed all the creeps. But you should be able to end this game. <laughs> it's just so weird, man. Like, all of that just for MF to, like, randomly be in a terrible spot and just insta die. Strange game, man. Very, very strange game. Um, <coughs> biggest flaws were definitely teleport usage. It was very, very poor. Um, early teleports were pretty much wasted. You don't really want to be teleporting back to lane. You want to be teleporting to other lanes to get advantages. Uh, that way, you had a teleport advantage where he had his teleport down for four and a half minutes, and you could have used that to teleport and have the number advantage and a fight somewhere else and snowball your team. Uh, it took you a while to take your tower. Just overall, everything was too slow in my opinion. Way too slow. Like You should have been going bot lane. You threw away your life like three times in the mid game, which probably stalled the game out an extra 15 minutes. Um, you should have been in bot lane splitting way earlier. Right after that play where you get both those towers and top with Lee Sin, you should have went bot lane and been there pressuring bot and told your team to four man mid. Because your team's never going to get caught because they have three jumps to get away more because it's casted in as well. So it's like they have a ton of jumps to get away. They're never going to get caught. The only way the enemy can get engaged is with like a blitzcrank hook or a random charm. So like it's so hard for your team to get caught. They can just stay four man mid. You split and then no one can 1v1 you. They have to send two people to deal with you. When they send two, you're so fed that you can probably 1v2 anyways and then your team is fighting. You give your team the number advantage because you suck two people to bot lane, right? So now your team has a 4v3 in mid lane and they can win that easy. So you definitely need to be have been splitting there. Like, this isn't really necessarily the team. Or when you do group, you have to wait for Leona to initiate shit. You were trying to initiate shit way too hard. Like, I don't know. Because you would go... Like, like your team can kind of follow up. I mean, it would have been better if Ezreal had um, Gauntlets instead of Triforce. But, whatever. Because then your team could have followed up easier. I don't know. Your engages were kind of weird. Because a lot of the times you just weren't looking at your minimap and you engage without people. But the main thing is I would have just been splitting way earlier. You really need to get your split push on. And uh, yeah, that was the way to win was split pushing through bot. I mean, you guys still win because you get a random kill. I mean, I think you would have won anyways because your team fight is just a little bit stronger than theirs. And you have Ezreal and he outperforms MF in the late game by a lot. And yeah, and you're fed. So I think you guys would have won anyways if you didn't get that weird catch. But... You could have ended this game 15, 20 minutes ago. You had such an advantage and you barely pushed it. You like waited to try and team fight and you like threw your lead so much. Could have been in that bot lane, like I said. But alright. GG. Good game, bro. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.